let's let's come back to the essential disagreement. You you were not very empathetic to the women who spoke out during the Me Too movement. And when I thought about it later, I mean, I publicly disagreed with you on it, and we had a bit of a, a very happy disagreement, by the way, and I wish more people uh, were that open to having happy disagreements. Uh, your argument seemed to be that we, your generation, had bigger battles to fight. And we knew how to handle these men who used to sort of unwantedly come on to us, two slaps, and it was done. When I talk to younger women, they're like, just because you ex dealt with it, why should we? And I think that's a good question. Why do we? And I go through this too. It's like one of the most irritating things I find is this notion of period leave. And believe it or not, this is a serious thing. And I know that if I believed in something idiotic like period leave, I could never have reported Cargill or anything else that I report. But there are younger, pe younger women who believe in this. And they're like, just because you wanted to pop a painkiller and go through that pain and tolerate that pain and be a journalist, that's your problem. Yeah, don't well, just react on me well, too what, first. Well, what should be the equivalent for men? I don't know, but why were well, they, you they not... They can also have bad why, days. How can it be an argument to say, we dealt with it, so, so no. should you? I'll tell you I'll that can't be an argument. Okay, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you seriously, my biggest problem with Me Too is that somebody making a pass at you, you know, by t putting his hand on your knee, is equated with rape. And you know, in India, we have little girls that are raped all the time. I think that we've got much bigger problems but to deal with. But there are many things between that. I think that you should have. Between the hand on the knee and the rape is what most Indian women experience. Well, you know, and when you experience it in the workspace, when you experience it in the workspace, it discourages women who are probably not as empowered not as strong from remaining in the workforce. So I actually see this as economic discrimination. Um, I don't agree with you. Tell me why. Because I'll tell you that, that for a start, uh, you know, we, uh, all women in, in jobs everywhere in the world risk uh, a man, yes. you know. Yes, uh, I think this has gone off. No? Uh, and I'm not saying, no, I think it's all gone off. Yeah, Just it's all gone. Okay, um, I just feel that, that in a country where you have little girls raped on a daily basis, that those are the issues that need to be discussed. And I think that in the workplace, if a woman has already got to the workplace, that she's already empowered, especially, and, and I, told, I told you then, I said it's going to die out, because it had no resonance in the country. It was Latians women, very empowered, and that foolish girl, Faye, she, she, made such a, she made such a drama about it in the discussion we had. She said, I'm wearing pants and just because you're wearing a salwar kurta. I mean, it, it became ridiculous and it's died out because it's two, it's privileged women making a fuss over things that are not Everything so important. Everything you and I say is, comes from a place of privilege. Privilege does not automatically but you disqualify must, you must, us you must be able from being to, on the right side of a debate. No, but don't you think... It's like saying we're not the women of shine we, bags, so we can't support no, them. No, but why, why do such an imitative thing? How is it that it's died out? Where are the other women? Where have they joined you? But it's Shaheen Bagh. But you don't, you don't regret having commented on a television anchor's trousers, which is what I you did with Faye I didn't say that. She, she, she actually, she, she, I said to her, I said, how far do you want to take it? And, you know, I said, you know, we've, we're dealing with... And you know what she said? And she said, are you... And, and then I said, well, you know, are, you, are we going to become men? And she said, and I said, you know, you, you're already halfway there. You're wearing pants. I am in the workplace. This is my place of work. I mean, she made a big drama. What, she made what it says to me is a generational fault line in this conversation. Uh, it happens between your generation and mine. It happens every day between me and younger women. Uh, I meet younger women, for example, who are quite okay with this thing called work-life balance that I don't even understand the meaning of. What is it? I don't know. But it's some millennial thing. It is, we'll ask, it is some millennial thing. Okay, it's not millennial. Can we get you, why don't you stand up and speak, please? This has obviously triggered something, so let's hear from you. I am really sorry, but you know, I think this is ridiculous. Hmm. You know, um, Me Too cannot be trivialized because we are speaking from a point of privilege. I agree it with that. It is not yeah. that only privileged women are undergoing, uh, you know, these kind of experiences at the workplace. Yeah. It's, you know, I also, because of the kind of work I do, I speak to very many women across society, across generations. It's very true. What about, a, 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 you know, a woman laborer 
who the contractor rapes, and she has no legal remedy. If she uh, actually says something, she gets chucked out. So, so Tavine's is, argument is that we're not talking... How is sorry, it those women haven't out? joined this movement? No, no, but, you know, the join, movement was too limited. No. Joining, was too limited. Joining is not... It's, again, getting very trivialized. I it's mean, not... It is, no, no, don't use that word recklessly, okay? Trivialization is not what it is. The Shaheen Bagh women are underprivileged and they're leading this movement. Why have they joined? Why are they not asking for Me Too? In the Me Too thing... It was, uh, you know, I'm, I think it's horrible when somebody is raped in, in, in the workplace. Okay, okay let me I, ask I you. Have a, just, I just, have just one second. I just have an interjection here and then, because this can become the whole conversation and we do have to move Let's on. Let's come back to the But I just, just one question on this. As a working journalist, all of us, as any, any woman in any profession, we have all had to deal with uh, not a man making a pass, that's different, but from some person who's persistent, unwanted, gross, that can be physical, that can be verbal. Now, Tavleen, everyone is not like you and me, ki ek thappar maro, deal with it. Because they don't come from families that have empowered women like that. They don't come. A lot of women still come from families who say, don't work, just get married and chhod do kaam. Does it not concern you that women may stop working if this kind of stuff goes on in the workplace? I feel that if the movement was strong enough, and had brought with it the kind of women who spoke up when that last sati occurred mm. in the 80s, right? Yeah. There were dhobans there saying, humko keh rahe hain ke ji shastro mein likha hai, shastra jala do. Sati nahi hum karenge, aur agar humko karni hai, to mardon ko bhi karwao. That kind of, you know, that reach has to happen. I'm not against women, you know, I mean, I prefer men, but I, I'm not against women in all their rights. But I think you've got to deepen that movement. It's, it was too... Okay. Deepening the movement is a, is, a, is a fair critique and I would accept that. Can we move on uh, now? I yes, think uh, just uh, not a question, no a comment. One too. line. The no fact man talking that about you me can too. have such a debate on a sensitive topic is great. Thank you.